All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please uh, invite your friends and share the link with everybody you know in your list. Uh, please let me know if my microphone is doing good, and if you have a problem, just let me know. Uh, we noticed that each time we speak about the Quran, the Muslims get so upset, and, uh, you know, like yesterday, we have Abdul who called me and he is very upset because I was reading a verse in the Quran where it says, Allah, he said, that you are allowed to eat in the house of your father, if you remember. So, and it says you are allowed to eat in, the, in your house. And he was screaming at us, he was upset, and he was calling me names. Uh, you know, uh, all of this because I, I was saying, why God, why we need God to say to us such a statement? Well, what the point? Why we need this God to say that to us? So yesterday, one of the Abdul, he called and he is so upset because simply uh, what we said is really hitting the nerve. It's making Islam look stupid, for it is stupid. Let us see together what this guy he said. Just as a start. <clears throat> house. I mean, since when eating in your house is a crime? What what verse is this? This is chapter twenty-four, verse number sixty-one. Let us see. All right. Anyway, my friends, let us see if verse. we can take more Abdul. And thank you for calling. Next time, change your name to Adam, so the Muslims will Let's get see where this guy. He Do you know in India the and what happened? <laughs> Christianity. Okay. That's the same guy. He just talked to you. Okay. Okay. He, let he us called, assume. Let us assume that he is. Well, you that's are, how okay, dumb okay. you are. Okay. He this, just showed that. Just to show you. Just to show you. Just to show you how stupid what you are saying. You just admitted yep. that you cannot refute me, and people are leaving Islam. Thank you very much. Now, can you refute me in that point? Yeah, I'm going to refer to yesterday you made a lie, right? You said something about eating at home or eating uh, at your cousins or at your friends, right? You try to make fun of that, right? Yeah. Okay. So, if you don't know, you don't know. You really? are just making yourself look so stupid. Well, you don't know what was going on you in your own country, let, let, in your own zone. Listen okay, to me. Okay, let us, let us, okay, let us see. Let us see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, hold on. you see, I'm are, tired are, you of you to, are, you, are you calling to fight or you are calling to answer? I'm calling because I'm tired of okay. you not listening. I'm asking you then. I'm asking you. Listen, what kind of God he says? What listen. kind of God? What kind of God he says? You can eat in your home. Explain to us. Okay, we we'll listen to you. What? Did, did, yes, I mean, if you listen, you shut your damn mouth. I will explain it to you. Speak with respect. You otherwise, me? I will insult your prophet. I, I warn you. Each time you insult me, I will insult your prophet. So don't bring insult you your prophet. Me. I'm tired of being respected. I don't care if you respect you me or not. You speak one. nicely so we can it talk. Is. This what is, kind of God I answer? You see, you are a coward. You will never answer. You will give me a speech. What yeah. kind of God? He says, if you are blind, you can eat in your home. If you are sick, I, you can I, eat I, in I your home. You, Go I ahead. You. Go ahead, answer. What? You said what? What kind of God? He says, no blame is there upon you. A blind, no blame. If there is somebody is lame, no blame. If somebody is sick, no blame upon yourself if you eat in your home. Do we need a verse from God to say it's okay to eat in our home? Okay. Do you know that as of today, if you go to India, some people do not eat together? Did you know that? Abdul. As of today, Abdul, hey, Abdul, listen to me. Just Abdul, 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 no, no, no. no. Me, just, 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 wait, just, wait, just, wait, just, wait, just, wait. First of all, hold on. Do you know that? Let me show you how stupid you are. First of all, this is speaking about you can eat in your home if you are blind. If you are sick, I will get if to you are a lame, no, no, you get from here first. Get start from here. What kind of God? You need to teach you that you can eat in your home. Start, please. Yes, mm. like it, 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 it just didn't start by that. If it, it ended up by that, it said you can eat to your cousins, to your mothers, to your mm. father. It didn't start by that. Start with it. Don't lie. Where the blind? That's where the blind? Do. He is allowed to eat, eat before it's time. Before the you see, he's accusing me. I am lying. It doesn't start by the by by, by that. It does not start by that. It does, you idiot. Secondly, 
when we when you say that do you know that in india people don't eat together until now that is stupid same time the verse in the front of us says you can eat together and you can eat apart so he agreed with the indian so what the point like he did not correct them and this is what the verse was given to people in india so look how they angry they get the second we start start showing them how silly this Quran is very silly and because they cannot answer it they have no idea what to say they get so angry so aggressive and they start calling us names now here because we mentioned this verse I remember a verse on the Quran which is shown us that Muhammad is nothing but a scam uh, if you go in this verse in the Quran here as an example chapter 15 verse number 95 the verse says and this is a translation in front of you which is not really accurate it says in the we stop those who made fun of you did he did Allah he stop those who made fun of him so what's happening here then hmm? if Allah we can change the translation for you Abdul if you like if you don't like this translation we can choose different Abdul let us see different Abdul uh, let us see Hali, Halali, and Khan. Truly, we suffice you against scoofers. Supposedly, we are the scoofers. Did that happen? No, no, my Skype is not open, guys. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna fight and shout. And I'm, I'm still not totally recover, so I prefer not, you know. Uh, give it a few days. Allah, He protect Muhammad from those who made fun of him. Is that true? In his time, no. In our time, no. So what this verse is about? And what about making fun of this God Himself? If you read any verses in the Quran, any chapter, I mean, you will find, like this chapter we are reading from now, I mean, it's very silly, it's very stupid. Like, look, I just go a few verses. Hmm? Verily your Lord is all-knowing creator. He is all-knowing creator. But yet your Lord, who is all-knowing creator, in the chapter of Al-Anfal, he said to them, if 100 of you can, can fight 1,000, then the verse after it, it says that Allah now, he knew that you have a weakness, so he lightened your task. So 100 can fight 200. Allah, the all-knowing, the creator, he did not know how he created the baby. We gave you seven repeated verses in the Quran actually by the way this is in the translation here but the Muslims until now did not know really what those are seven repeated or you know what what is that nobody knows everybody making his own guess and then you look at the verse after it you ask yourself what this verse before have to do with this verse after have to do with this verse after look not with your eyes what hmm. see I am indeed plain Warner as we have sent down 
on the dividers what does that mean and then they put between two bracket Croatia how people even know that uh, what is that and then we send the Quran in, in two parts in two parts Muhammad when I explain why his book is not a book why he is like it's coming like here there you know I mean you you read whatever you read in this book you will find that there's nothing there makes sense nothing makes sense the more we read about this Quran you see what make Muslims upset is reading their book if you don't read their book this is why Umar al-Khattab he forbid the Christians from teaching their children the Quran so they will not see how silly stupid this religion is just say Shahada convert to Islam you do not need to know and because this verse making them upset we need to know why it's making them upset the answer is very simple this guy he gets so upset because he found that really this is a stupid verse and it make Islam look horrible a God he is saying to us no blame upon you if you are blind to eat in your home what is that no blame upon you if you are lame to eat in your home no blame upon you if you are sick to eat in your home and then they call us and they call us names and they are so upset but you know we are just asking question what kind of God he made such a verse there's no way that God is the one who came with this what kind of God he says you it's okay to eat in your houses I mean what people they eat where or to eat in the house of your father or to eat in the house of your mother or the house of your sister what does that mean people for centuries and thousands of years they eat in their houses where they eat in the restaurants I mean if we don't eat in our houses where we will eat imagine Allah he make a verse that says it's okay to pee in your house I mean what is that it's okay to sleep in your house Imagine here it says it's not even it's not a sin It's not a sin It's not a sin How in the world we come to this to this you know to to this madness Since when people believe it's a sin to eat in their house Look at this. It's not sin if you eat alone or apart. You know, like this is can be accepted if he if this God he just created us yesterday, and we do not know what to do. We can wear, sleep wear, eat wear. You know, like we are just a, we just a, we are toys came out of the manufacturer, and this is the first day of Adam in Earth. He do not know what to do. He is just a cave man. He don't know anything. And Muhammad, he came, and there's kingdoms, there's empires, there's families, there's children, there's tribes. Even there is, you know, already people they knew what sister mean. People they knew already what father mean. Or people, it's not we are coming from zero. And this guy, he is teaching us. We are not monkeys in the zoo. You are teaching us we can eat together. No sin shall be, shall it be, for you whether you eat together or apart. I mean, is that the Ten Commandment of Islam? Is that the Ten Commandment God He gave to Musa? But this is the version of Islam, and the Ten Commandment says, "No blame upon you if you are blind to eat in your house." This is the King Commandment now. 
No blame upon you if you are lame to eat in your in your house. No blame upon you if you are sick to eat. In your, what, what they would eat if a sick he don't eat in his house? Where he will eat? I mean, what do you mean no blame? So we have ten commandment. Muhammad he have commandment too. I mean, here we go. God, he is talking to him. Actually, he never talked to him. Send him Jibreel. And now he is giving him extremely important information. It's not a sin if you eat alone. And since I spoke about this verse, the Muslim made a thousands of videos to attack me. But they cannot refute. You will see just attacking Christian prince. You see, the, the, the thing the Muslim they do, they cannot find a solution for the problem. So what they do, they attack the person. And look at this idiot. He came with an idea saying, well, in India, there's people don't eat together. So what? Still, Allah, he agree with them. He says, it's okay to eat together or not to eat. He did not say to them, you cannot do that. <laughs> so? And let us say for the sake of argument, there is somebody don't want to eat with the, anyone or a group of people. They want to eat individual alone. So is that sin? Since when that is a sin? I mean, what is that? Look what the verse is saying. It's no sin. Any verse in the Quran. If you read it carefully, we will see it's a joke. Chapter of Anur. If you read it carefully, you will see that this is a very funny chapter like uh, I made before a video about this verse as an example Allah divided you see Allah is all-knowing I mean what you can say if Allah is all-knowing you shut up Allah created every animal of water of them is a kind that goes upon its belly hey, by the way fast translation it doesn't say it goes upon their belly it says yamshi which means walk an animal who do that we cannot say in arabic walk even in english you say creep correct if an animal he is creeping we say creep the quran using the wrong word in arabic it says here in the front of me yamshi there's a guy he said oh yamshi mean he move that's false yamshi from min masha he walk not he move so some of them yamshi he walk in his belly nice to meet you they don't they are not walking in their belly they are grieving arabic we have the word zahaf and the kind which is goes upon two legs okay so now we have the first kind which is uh, walk in their belly according to the quran but it's a mistake uh, in arabic it should be creep and the other kind is walk in two legs okay and and there's a kind which walk in four that's it Why you want to watch Discovery Channel anymore? Allah told us what He created. There are three kinds of a creation. The kind walk in its belly, and the kind which is walking in two legs, and the kind walking four. That's it. Allah never heard of something called a spider, never heard of something called ants. Never heard of something. I mean, what is that? What, what this guy is talking about? What two, three, four? What is that?
here we have one of two explanation either Allah is saying that I am the one who created only those things and the rest I bought them from the mall like this is my uh, copyright made you know I'm the one who made those things walking two and three uh, walking two and uh, you know what is that so when we question those crazy stuff the Muslims get upset The same chapter, Allah claimed that He sent hail from mountains in heaven. Have you ever heard of smart God like this? Hail in mountains in heaven. And the Muslim in their translation, they try to make it look nice, look like different, like from mountains, cloud like mountains, but doesn't say cloud like mountain. It's a lie. It says min jibar in fiha. Wa yunziru min as-samai min jibar in fiha. And we send from the sky, from mountains in it. Hail. So he hit with it whoever he wish. That's God. And this is just in one in one chapter in the Quran. <clears throat> yeah, we did not go in details in every chapter yet. You cannot read to Muslims their Quran. They feel insulted because they knew that it's funny and it's not right. The Muslim they say to us that Allah is nothing like him. How many of you heard before the Muslim saying nothing like Allah? And actually, there's a verse in the Quran saying that, correct? Nothing like Allah. And we cannot compare Allah to anything. This is what they say to us. It's haram. Okay, well, so why Allah compare himself even to an olive tree and a candle? If we cannot compare Allah to anything, how Allah he compare himself? To objects read it be carefully Allah is the light of the heaven and the earth he is the same as his light the same as a niche wherein there is a lamp and the lamp is in a glass and the glass is where is a shining star the lamp is uh, kindled from the blessed trees and olive neither of east nor in the way I mean if this is not Allah comparing himself to object what is comparing he himself describing himself he himself comparing himself to a candle light up by olive oil from an olive tree and yet they say to you you cannot compare Allah to any object Allah, he say he have hands. They get, we, we show them that Allah have hands. They get upset. He, he is the one who said he have hands. And the Muslim scholars, they agree. He have hands. He have foot. He have face. He have, he's a physical being. All those verses, there's no use for them. Look at this. Bad women for bad men. Bad women for bad women. Anyone notice here what the problem? Anyone notice what is the problem here? Bad men for bad women and bad women for bad men. Muhammad, he said, if you remember,
Had not of Eve, women would have never betrayed her their husbands. So what Muhammad is saying? Women, Eve is bad, right? Obvious. And the funny, the Muslim, they say that the Bible blame Eve for the sin of Adam. And in fact, it's the opposite in Islam. It's Islam who do that, not us. And Muhammad here, he don't mention Adam. He says, if not Eve, no woman betray her husband. Okay. So if she was a bad woman, remember, the Muslim believed that Adam was a prophet. Correct? Now, what is the connection with this? Anyone notice what the connection now? What is the mistake? I just gave you a hint. <clears throat> what is the mistake? <coughs> Who want to help me? Anybody? What is the mistake in this verse? No, that's mean that uh, prophets are bad. Correct? Because bad bad men marry bad women, and bad women they marry bad men. In the Quran, Aisha and Hafsa, she have a strike against Muhammad, and Allah He accused them that they became kuffar, sagat aymanahum. It says in Arabic, sagat. Which means their heart became like kuffar. Those are the wives of Muhammad. The wives of Muhammad been threatened by Allah. If you don't stop attacking the Prophet, Allah will defend him. And this is very funny verse too, very lame. I mean, look at this verse. Muhammad, you have a fight with two women, and then Allah is involved, the angels, Jibreel, the believers, all the angels. I mean, it's like a war, so, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the end of the time. It's two women fighting their husband. Do we need Allah and the angels and every righteous believer? What is that? And here it says, it says that obviously those two women, they are not being good. For two women, they should be obedient to their, to their husband, especially he's a prophet. But because they are not obedient, Things became so crazy to the point that Muhammad he have to create a verse saying that this is coming from Allah. And if you stop going against me, Allah, and after that, actually, he even uh, uh, threatened them that he is going to exchange them. Allah will exchange the wives for him. He will send them to uh, back to eBay and he will get back brand new wives. Do you see it? It may be if he divorced you. That his Lord will give you, give him instead of you, why is better than you? So things are getting really worse. We are almost divorced. Okay. Now we go to this verse here. If a bad woman marry bad men, and bad men marry bad women. So Muhammad was a bad man. And here there is something stupid too. If a man he marry a woman and his wife she cheated in him, who is the bad here? How we can say bad man marry bad women? If a woman she is a good woman and she marry a man and he cheat on her, how we can say good women marry good husbands? If this verse is accurate, that means all of those who bad, they should not have a spouse who is good. Do we agree, guys, based on this verse? You can change the translation, by the way. I know the translation is kind of confusing, but what you can do, I mean, welcome to Muhammad religion. Everything there is shish kebab, but falafel. Look, this guy, he, say, he make it impure. Women impure are for men impure, and men impure for women impure, and women of a purity are for men of a purity, and men of a purity. I mean, do you know, do you need to repeat this? I mean, it's like a joke. But how this can be true? Guys, 
is is what I'm saying uh, logical that this is going to be true? How many how many uh, of us we experience in our life that you have a spouse or you know you know a family or even your parents or it doesn't matter. I mean, always there is somebody between them is the bad and the good. There's no way that a woman she is good. She always going to marry a good man. It's impossible. <clears throat> even the funny Quran says that the wives of Lut. Let us go there. <clears throat> Chapter sixty six, verse number ten. <clears throat> and here you notice why the Muslims they hate they, they, they are scared really to have a debate with me because we know all the laundry, all the laundry is inside. Allah okay Allah he want to mention to us the story of two bad women who are they the wife of Noah and the wife of the wife of Lut okay that's mean Noah and Lut are bad remember Lut in Islam is not like in the Bible Lut in the Bible is the prophet in Islam is a prophet you just told me that Bad women will marry bad men and now you are saying to me that the prophet of Allah his name is Noah And the other one his name is Lot Their wives they betrayed him Do you see it guys? Do you notice with me how this is funny and silly? Bad women marry bad men. I mean, this is the most stupid wisdom ever I heard. No, that's not true. Bad women, they marry bad men. And, bad, and, and good women, they marry good men. And good men, they marry good women. Well, look around you why so why people they you know they, they we hear of a cheating and even sometime even killing what are you talking about so the Muslims they get so upset when you start reading and using your brain the Quran is a wonderful book as long as you are a silly stupid idiot you don't want to use your brain that's fine that's you're good you're good to go okay I'm a good man so that that's it that there is no way I will marry a bad woman who said that who said that who is a silly stupid he said that any Muslim here disagree that this is silly and this is not right You see, we are not even studying the Quran. We are just reading here and there. I mean, just from the chapter 24. All of this garbage is in chapter 24. Do you see this chapter 24? It's a garbage. It's just in one page. All this craziness is in one page in the Quran. So how in the world we can accept that this is a book of God saying that bad women marry from bad men and bad and, and good men they marry from good women that's not true this is not reality this is fiction and this is stupid actually most of the time what happened is the opposite and I will explain to you if a woman and I speak about Middle Eastern, I'm a Middle Eastern. I can't speak really about different, even though like I live in America, but I don't really too much associate. I don't have like uh, uh, family, friends, etc. So I cannot really talk about American society as society. I'm not too much heavily involved in the society. In the Middle East, if a girl she don't 
but too much make up and let us make it simple and I will say it as it is you know me I don't make a sugar coat if she is not a whore nobody notice her if she is not literally a whore nobody even will think about marrying her this is how it is in the Middle East really you will find good men who care for finding a woman who is not that kind if you don't expose your skin even now nobody is noticing you if a woman today she says she is virgin she is 30 years old and she is still virgin they will make fun of her she will became the joke what good men for bad women? What are you talking about? If you go in the Middle East, you see a Muslim woman. She is wearing hijab, but she has 10 kilograms of makeup. And the Muslim women, they use something that's called, I don't know what, uh, what the name in, in English. <clears throat> It's it's have a very poison material, but it make the skin very smooth. It's like will make you like look like you're born yesterday. So they use this this uh, uh, local makeup. It make their faces very white, and it make their skin extremely smooth. But what this is what this makeup does, it damage your face. So when you are in the age of fifty, you will look like you are eighty. So you will see a woman after they get married, you know, and then after that they stop putting this makeup, how badly they look like. So in order to get a husband, you have to put this makeup because you have to look, you know, you have to draw your eyes. You have to make your eyes look big. You have to wear tight clothes so, so, that, so the man, he will see your bum and the man will notice that you have a big breast. It's simply you're acting like a whore now you're trying to sell out your body this is how it is so to get the attention of the male as if you are in the wood in the jungle and the good man he is the same as the rest of the men he's a man same as the bad man he get attracted by sex and sexual uh, appetite oh this woman she is beautiful she have a nice body the good man he see the same as the bad man too he have eyes he have a desire what does this have to do bad men marry bad women there's bad men there's bad women everywhere and there's no way that the quran here is speaking about wisdom And you know for sure like some people don't agree with me about what I say this is your opinion for me I believe that women when they expose themselves like you know I mean for me I find it really uh, not right uh, because if I'm oh like you know the, uh, in, in the world today uh, there's a culture of uh, size you know size does matter like I heard there's an Israeli uh, billionaire. He died in the in the clinic because they're trying to 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 increase the size of his penis. I mean, look at this idiot. He's a billionaire. He's a businessman, very successful, and now there is something missing. He wanted to have a big penis. I mean, how silly, how stupid a human being is. Or a woman, she spent her saving and she's working like a donkey, you know, for a, for two years, and then she want to have a big breast. Why? Because society did fool us. They made everybody believe that this is what the beauty and this is what is really good. And now everybody want to get that. It's a product. A human being, he lost his dignity and he decide uh, not to accept how he is created and he thought or he think now that men, they will like women who have big breasts. Well, I like cows. 
I mean, what's wrong with you if you have a small, smaller breast? You are not a female no more. And if a man he marry you because you have a big breast, or he go out with you because of your breast, well, tomorrow he will find bigger ones, a balloon. Tomorrow your neighbor she will pump some silicone inside her breast, and she will have bigger ones, and then he will stop looking at you. If this is the kind of the man you want to be with. So everything these days is upside down. Where is the bad men and where is the good, the good women? Where is the, what are we talking about? Then for sure not to forget to mention the risk and the danger of what you do and the money you spend. And for what? God he made us and for every one of us he made someone fit for us trust me you can you know you, you can find somebody fit for you and if a person he want to marry you because of something you have which is physical well he will leave you for something physical too because he never loved you physical is physical you are pretty today tomorrow you will not be you will get older don't ever marry a man like this the same he like you for you have whatever you have now tomorrow he will like someone she have better one because still you will not stay even you are the most beautiful girl in town uh, tomorrow you will get older a few years from now and somebody will replace you but here we have a problem and the problem is that the Muslims they come to us and they say that this is God and God is speaking with them and then when you read this wisdom, we find we don't find wisdom, we find wiz and dumb. Wiz in Arabic is a ducks. It's a dumb duck. And you will notice even the Quran is involved in this agenda. Have you ever heard of a God? He speak that he will give you women in the heaven. They have big boobs. So the culture of big boobs is heavily involved in Islam too. I mean, what kind of God? This is chapter 78, verse number 33. So now every Muslim, he want to get big boobs. Do you see it or I'm making things up? What is the wisdom of God to say to us, I will give you women, and he will describe for us the size of their breast? And then we find Muhammad, he described for us that the penis of the man will never sleep. And in the, another story, it says an endless penis, which is a fine, I don't find like a reward. Imagine, I don't want to go to heaven. I mean, if you have a if you have a tail, you can drag it behind you. But if you had an endless penis in front of you, how you can walk with it? Imagine, close your eyes and imagine somebody, a man, he have an endless penis, and his penis is not coming behind him because it's not a tail; it's in front of you. How you can walk with it? What is the reward about it? You live in New York and your penis now in China and the police there they are giving you a ticket because you are disturbing the traffic how you can control this penis endless penis why your wife is next to you in the couch and now your your penis will, 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 will make you turn hey penis where are you I am in the galaxy number seven are you coming back soon I have no idea So the culture of the devil, I believe, I, you know, for me, I believe this is all is a, is a, is a devilish culture. You know, the devil want to make you believe that having a big penis, big breast, big, 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 this is the best. And in fact, by the way, uh, you know, enjoying sexuality have nothing to do with how small or big the women or the man. That's stupid. But you are what you believe. If you believe in that, that's it. <clears throat> 
the second you start believing in this garbage you are part of this garbage And even Muhammad, he promised the Muslims that every woman in heaven, she will have a one mile ass. What what I would do with one mile ass? I mean, what's wrong with the uh, the the ass the women she have today? Okay, you made her you made her ass as big. Still, it's an ass. May Allah ask you. Big ass, huge ass, small ass. What the difference? It's still at the end of the day, it's an ass. What I will do with this as she's a volcano I will open like a Disneyland and do hiking over the ass of my wife in heaven she is so smooth I challenge you to hike it what this one mile as for if if my wife ass is one mile will you have to increase my size otherwise I would be a mosquito she fought at me she killed me and now if you increase my size that means nothing changed still the same because size is relative guys do you understand what i'm saying what what is it what is the point that's stupid Where is where is wisdom in this religion? Where is, where is God? There's no God they talk. There's no wise. There's no wisdom. There's no dignity. And all what we see is a, a, a satanic promises trying to tempt us to do something. <clears throat> in the same verse, here is Allah is making a threat. Allah will send them to hell. Allah will burn you. Allah will kill you. And then Allah, but if you believe in me, I will hold on. If you believe in me, I will give you very women, women who have a very beautiful boobs. And what is that? So now I will believe in Allah because you want to give me a woman with boobs and you will give me full cup. I'm so glad it's not half cup. I mean, imagine you go to heaven and you find that your cup is half, not full. How disappointing. So Allah, he promised you it's a full cup. Or what about Allah? He promised us in heaven that we will have a bracelet. Bracelet all those verses about a bracelet You believe it What do you want more look uh, look at the accessory Allah will give you in heaven What is that Finally, I will get the bracelet for free and it's made from gold In the heaven of Allah, there is silk. Look like Allah, he cannot come with something better. Silk. This is the man-made silk. We take it from the worm. The worm does not really make silk silk. I mean, as a clothes, we make it. Can't you bring something better? Can't you use imagination? Wherever we go in this book, we find that it's silly, it's stupid, it doesn't make sense. Garden of Eden. Are we still in the Garden of Eden? 
What Garden of Eden? <clears throat> Muhammad, he will send us to Garden of Eden. But Garden of Eden is not in heaven. Garden of Eden is it was down on earth. What kind of heaven? I will go to the mall. Give me, a, give me a credit card. Have a good money in it, and I will get all those things. What silk? What? What are you talking about? I do not need to go to heaven. Have you ever heard of a of a of a God? He promised me a couch in heaven. What do you want more? Allah will give you a couch. The Muslim they get upset for we are reading how stupid this. Look at this. I mean, what is that? What about Allah will make your face soft? Look at this. The translation here is false. It says. In that day, other uh, other uh, uh, other faces will be calm. It doesn't say that. Yoma yoma idin naima wujuhun naima. Their faces will be soft. Here we go. Allah will make your face a skin soft. What do you want more? Hmm? High garden. There's the low garden. The high garden. In there, they will not hear any bad things. And nobody knew, was no CNN. They're in, there's a gushing spring. Okay, nice to meet you. Their end will be couches, which is raised higher. No, you will not have a, you, those better when Arab, they don't have a, they don't know even what couch is. Like they, they hear of it, that people who live in cities, they have them, the, per, the Persian, the Roman, but the Arab don't have. So here we go, Allah, he promised the Bedouin. You will have a uh, raised couches. You will go. You will have. You you will have a uh, uh, you know a globets. You will have cups right in front of you. Look at these cushions here. I mean, what do you want more? Do you see this mush uh, cush uh, cushions? Finally, we will have cushions. What is this? <clears throat> Carpet. And after that, from speaking about the heaven, look, Allah, he jumped to speak about how the camel is created. What does it have to do with this? <coughs> we were talking about the cushions, the carpet, <coughs> uh, the, the, the couch. And then suddenly, do you see how the camel is created? What does it have to do with this? And then Allah he compared the camel and how the heaven is is raised. I mean, what's wrong with? What is the connection about how the camel is created and the heaven is raised? And then Allah cannot keep his mouth shut. Here we go. Now he arrived where he want to say to us that the earth is a flat. You see here in the translation, it says, Don't you see how the earth is spread? It doesn't say that. It says Sutihat. It made a flat. Liars. The Arabic here, Sutihat. You can ask anyone who speaks Arabic, they will tell you that Sutihat means flat. Don't you see how the earth was made flat? And the heaven was raised. The heaven was raised since when? And the mountain was set up. What do you mean mountain was set up? According to Islam, they believe the Quran teaching here 
that Allah he placed the mountains in the top of the earth but this is false the, the mountains are coming from deep inside the earth I mean we are just reading one one page look how many disaster in it we are reading chapter 88 <clears throat> This is God talking. And do you know what the gushing spring will be in heaven? Who remember? Somebody saying he want to hear a Christian prince. So who am I? It's shadow. <clears throat> No, no, in the heaven, yeah, in the in the heaven there is a river, it's called the Nile and Euphrates, yes, but there is a spring. Anyone remember? Anyone remember the spring? This is a spring, this is not the river. We are talking about different thing now. Who remember? How many of you watch the, the part of the Caribbean? And they will have found the fountain of youth. Do you remember? Did you watch it? In the heaven of Allah, there's the fountain of youth. Actually, in the Quran, there's a prophet, his name is Al-Khudr. Al-Khudr. Uh, his name, uh, Al-Khudr, meaning green. Green, why his name is green? Who remember? Yeah, sal -Sabil. Who remember why he was called the green? Let us see how many of you remember. <clears throat> he was called the green because he drank from the from the from the fountain of youth. And because of that, if he even set his ass over a dry grass, the grass will turn green. That's why they call him Mr. Green. If you go in the Quran, you will find the story you can read in chapter 18. You will find the story here that Allah, Musa supposedly, he asked Allah, if there is somebody he knows more than me between your prophets, Allah, he said, yes, there's a guy, his name is Al-Khudr. Then Musa, he said to him, how am I going to see Al-Khudr? Who is this guy? Where he live? So Allah, He told him, "Go and meet him, and take with you a uh, uh, take with you a whale." The Muslim they translated as a fish. And Allah gave him a sign: when your fish go to life, or the fish is dead, or the whale is dead. So when your fish or whale come back to life, that's mean you are in the right spot. You will find him there. So what happened? They took the the uh, uh, Musa's. He uh, he traveled with a with a guy. His name is Noon, and Noon mean whale. That's what Noon is, <clears throat> which is funny. Even the servant, his name is Noon. Uh, so when they arrive to a certain area, they wanted, you know, like uh, they sat next to the spring of water. To wash, to drink, or whatever, and then looked like a drop of the water hit the whale, and the whale came back to life, and he ran away. When they reached the point where the two uh, two seas meet, translation here is very funny. I mean, this guy who translating is an idiot. When the two meet, what two meet? It says. Anyway, that fish it took away in the water and run free. 
Okay, but the fish is dead. How the fish run? You know, the Quran doesn't say details. Really, the Quran is a stupid book. To in, in order to understand what is happening here, you have to go and read the Hadith where Muhammad tell the story. And then they wanted to eat the fish. Moses he asked his servant to bring the fish to eat it. The guy he said, "Oh, look like the fish run away." And then after the fish run away, they decide, okay, where would the fish should be run away? It must be next to that spring. So they went back. <clears throat> and this fish, when she swim in the ocean, wherever she swim, what is behind her became a road from rocks inside the ocean. So then Musa's he walked in that road and he arrived and he found Al Khadr. Sitting in an, in the top of a mate in the top in the middle of the ocean. <clears throat> Actually, maybe we can find. <coughs> the Hadith. Let us see. Yeah, here we go. Here you will see the story how Moses and the guy, and you see his his uh, uh, his his servant, his name Yeshua Ben Nun. I mean, even they make names. You know, they make Jewish names. They make them up. So uh, And let us see here, we will find the the fountain of youth in the hadith. Um, and look here, do you see what I, I told you? So they came back uh, uh, retracting their steps and then they found in the sea the way of the fish looking like a tunnel. So the fish is swimming, but when she swim, all the water turned to rock. So they, there was astonishing event for his attendant, uh, attendant. And then, and there was tunnel for the fish. When they reached the rock, they found a man covered with the garment, and that is Al Khudr. But I'm trying to find you where is the fountain? Hold on. I hope it's in this hadith. Um, yeah, here we go. Hold on. They arrive at the rock. There was a water spring called Al Hayat. The, the the fountain of life do you see it and here it says and none come in touch with this water but becomes alive do you see it this is Islam so the fountain of youth is exist in Islam long before and by the way fountain of youth is exist before Islam have nothing to do with Arab it's an old Persian uh, legions. There's a there's an, an an old story about a guy. His name is Gilgamesh. I don't know if you heard of him in history. Who he wanted to find the fountain of youth and wisdom. So he was going and he searched for it, you know. Uh, but this is Islam. The fish. What? How the fish? Uh, the Muslim they want to explain how the fish come back to life. Simply, she drank from the fountain of youth. And the Muslim, they, this is Sahih Bukhari. They cannot say it's a lie, by the way. 
They can't say it's a lie. This is Sahih al-Bukhari and this is the Hadith. Because I know then they will say it's weak. Now maybe next time we can we can read the whole story and we go in details in this funny fiction stupid cartoon story. But this is Islam and this is what Islam is about. And who is the one is talking? What do you think, Abdul? We have a 21 dislike Abdul. We have 601 like none Abdul. Here we go. The Abdul dislike what I'm saying. I'm reading their I'm, I'm reading their book. They dislike it. Did I lie? Did I say something? Is not it's it's in front of you. Why are you upset? Do you really believe there's a fountain? We drink from it, we became green. And we became youth if you remember <coughs> uh, there's a video made by the Dean show they got a guy from Egypt he have a PhD in Islam he's a sheikh so he was saying when you enter the heaven there is two drink you have to drink one drink you drink it you will become tall. You will become 60 meter tall like Prophet Adam. And will make you so white. Will make you what? So white. And the other drink, you drink it, you is going to take all the hate is inside you and bad things. So this is the first drink you drink when you enter heaven. Salsabila. You drink it. It's like uh, what is called this uh, Alice and Alice in the Wonderland. She ate from the cheese, something like that, or drink. I'm not sure. And then she became small, and then she became big again. Like you know, this is this is God, and this is heaven, and this is Islam, and this is this is this is what you want me to believe in. Why I cannot enter heaven with my size? I mean, why I have to go and be uh, 60 meter tall? What's wrong with me now? Like I am now 12 meter only. What's wrong with that? My size is not good. And why I have to be white? <clears throat> anyway <laughs> so we did not really uh, do like a, a big study in, in this book today but in, in based on what we saw is enough to prove that this is very stupid cult and if you believe in it you are believing in fictions and, and madness what is that what fish go back to life for drinking water and it's a water of youth and al khadr uh, by the way al khadr do you know al khadr he he attend how many funerals how many of you remember the guy his name here al khadr how many funerals he attend <coughs> because this guy he drank from the fountain of youth so he will never die that's it so he attend the funeral of Noah and he attend the funeral of Harun and he attend the funeral of Prophet Muhammad all of this because he drank from the fountain of youth and for sure now he's alive he's listening to us you know I bet you he have a smart a smart fan a phone in his hand now and he's, he's listening to us <clears throat> yeah I'm not going to stay long but anyway <coughs> uh, 
as you see this is a very stupid cult and if you are smart you cannot really be believe in it I don't know how smart you are this is depend to you I mean how how you think how you make decisions but there is no way you want to believe in this and me myself I don't want to believe that there's a God who says I'm going to give you a bracelet if you believe in me that is not even a good gift for a kid what about smartphone what about 4k or big screen TV what about unlimited subscribe to Netflix in heaven what we will do in heaven sitting in the couches having sex all day that's it how boring and Six and food, six and food, six and food, six. There's no fishing, there's no hunting, there's no hiking. Six and food, six and food. Everybody having six and food, six and food. They, they, are, not, they, they are not even talking. There's no talking. Effing and eating. I will spend my eternity just doing this. And what after that I mean what the accomplishment we did is that the happiness reading what, is, what about love I mean the whole Quran by the way never mentioned that you you will be in heaven and you will have love you will not make love you will have sex Muhammad he says Dahman Dahman you will be pushing hard hard I'm not going to go explain to you what he says it's a dirty but you know what I'm talking about right the man he will be Dahman Dahman he will like boom 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 non-stop like like very strong pushing this is a prophet of God describing for us how we will F in heaven Dahman Dahman and our orgasm is 70 years orgasm I mean what about one year orgasm so second the year after we go vacation what about we have one year orgasm and one year sleep take uh, take a break 70 years orgasm what we would do with that why a human being he needs 70 years orgasm <clears throat> uh Ronnie is asking for reference next time because now I am going to go soon uh, <clears throat> but as you see there's no way just remind me next time we go on air Ronnie we we will show you the reference actually if you have my book six and Allah you have all the reference <clears throat> and a lot more actually here we are not mentioning not even one percent but as you see there's no way a human being he have a little brain he will believe in such a garbage Chapter 18, by the way, is the best for fun. If you like to read something, all chapter 18 is a copy paste from legions people believe before Muhammad. Like here is the story of Alexander the Great. How he found the sun set in a murky water. And by the way, in the Middle East, yes, the sun set in a murky water. Not only the sun, all of us, we are murky water. I mean, the God who believed the sun set in murky water, how murky he is. <clears throat> anyway, guys, I'm not going to stay longer. I want to say thank you for being here. I will try tomorrow. If I can be here, I will. If not, maybe the day after. Until then, I say may the Lord bless you. And thank you for those who support us by every mean in every way. And we appreciate you all. Uh, we pray that the Lord will give us uh, always what we need to make us happy and make everybody happy. Happiness has nothing to do with big penis. Happiness is not about having a lot of food. It's about having, what about having enough food? What about having enough money to cover our life? What about having enough health to stay healthy? Appreciation should be for what enough, not for 
a lot because a lot is not need or no need for it's it's useless it's stupid this is cannot be from God happiness have nothing to do even with being so rich actually richness bring corruption look around you you will see billionaires they die because they take doses of uh, drugs and madness because simply when they became rich they lose their mind everything is in their hand whatever they want they can have and then they found themselves they are empty so appreciate what you have because maybe if you have more than what you have you will be something evil you will be something disgusting you will not be you you will not be the good person who you are so be happy with what you have you know a human being don't remember how nice to have teeth until one day he have a pain in one of them then he will remember he will say to, the, to himself wow I was enjoying my teeth for years and now look what happened one day of pain so people don't appreciate what they have until they lose it so don't wait for that point where you lose what you have people who don't appreciate it is going to be taken away from them same as your life if you don't appreciate your life is going to be taken away from you and you will not deserve to have it as it's given to you first time so I pray that all of us we will learn how to appreciate that God he gave us a gift that we can think we can recognize and this is why the Bible says examine the spirit and by giving us that opportunity that's mean he gave us the ability and give us the ability that's mean we are really giving the tools to think and to be wise so why you will not be this is the book in the front of you and you be the judge it cannot be from God this is a bunch of fiction stories there's no way a person who have a little education will come with it a person who is copying legions of many nations before him claiming that God told him those legions by doing that he exposed himself chapter 18 in the Quran is the best chapter to make everybody laugh at Islam it's a collection of stupidity and we appreciate that the Lord always he gave us wisdom so we can recognize and we can see we are not a, like a bunch of programmed animals who they do things because they are created to do it God he made of us different creation and God is good so remember always and yeah thank you for the prayer for those who they are saying get well and you know I'm, I'm getting better uh, It's good to be sick sometime as I said because you don't appreciate how healthy you are until one day you get sick this is how a human being is you know so everything happened for a reason and even what you think it can be bad it might be good to remind you that you need always to 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 have a balance in your life a health we have we don't appreciate food we have we don't appreciate a roof we have we don't appreciate there's people they don't even have a roof there's people don't have even food there's people they cannot go to school there's people they dream to have a computer like you go and see in Asia poor kids you know like having a computer is like a dream what it what, what and it, they don't have internet it's so expensive it's extremely impossible they are poor you know I mean you will not know really how lucky you are until you go and see and when you see you'll find that you are not poor you are extremely rich compared to those people so we have we have always to learn the appreciation and you know the funny like i went i went in asia and I visited villages where poor people are so poor, extremely, extremely poor, but you will not believe it how nice they are. And everybody is laughing. I mean, I, I was I was feeling like 
sorry for them uh, but I don't know if you're sorry for them or sorry my, for myself because I'm not happy like they are a small tiny room there's five children and their father and their mother one room there's no kitchen there's nothing and the and you should see the roof you should see the floor you should see I mean and they are they are happy and they are very decent they are very nice very beautiful But at the end of the day, please learn how to appreciate so the Lord will give you more. With this, I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.